see it on your, your bulletin cover, right, the word saints. We just sang for all the saints. When you hear that word saints, what comes to mind? You can answer if you'd like. Righteous people. Really, no one's going to go with the football team? I figured that was going to be the first answer, the, the, the football team in New Orleans. Right, or, or you might think that the first thing that, that comes to mind when you hear the word saints is Catholic, right? Because the, the Catholic Church has, has saints. As you and I celebrate All Saints Sunday, and we look at those words recorded for us in the book of Revelation, we have a, a bit broader view of saints. If I were to ask you, do you feel like a saint? My guess is you would probably say no. Right? Because what do you have in mind when you, you think of that word saint? Faith? Yeah, you, you think of someone, right, who's, who's got this, this strong faith, right, who's, who's, who's far stronger spiritually than I am, right? There might be other things that, that pop into your mind, all of which you aren't, right? And yet when you look at the, what the word saint means, saint simply means holy one. One who's been made pure cleansed, purified, right? We heard it in our first lesson this morning from Revelation, right? The Apostle John, as he's seeing this vision in the book of Revelation, says they were wearing that, that group of, of that great multitude that no one could count who were standing before God, said they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. A bit later, he says, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb makes even more sense as you look at just what Revelation is all about. Right, the, the book of Revelation at first glance might be a little bit intimidating, but when you look at what the main focus of Revelation is, it's all different views or perspectives on one single thing. Christ's victory. And so as you read through those different visions that God gave John, all God is doing with John is giving him uh, this view of Christ's victory, and then this view of Christ's victory, and giving them all different perspectives on the same thing. How Christ has defeated the devil, and Christ has won. And because Christ has won, because Christ has defeated death and sin and the devil, you and I are holy ones. You and I, as, as children of God, are pure, forgiven. Now, don't always feel that way, do we? In fact, chances are, as, as you go through life, as you live and experience each day, perhaps pure, holy, a saint, might be the last thing that comes to mind. Perhaps you're a bit like the Israelites, right? That as you, you see all the different trials and, and hardships that come up in life, things that you weren't expecting, you begin to get a little angry with God. Because you don't quite agree with how things are going and that his plan might not be the best. Or perhaps as you're in the midst of those difficulties in life, a few words of grumbling and complaining come out. Right? You complain about the, the busyness of life. You complain about how things haven't gone your way. You, you grumble a bit about, man, about all the things that have just frustrating in life. Much like the Israelites, huh? As they wandered in the wilderness. Not exactly the attitude or the, the reaction of a saint. Right, or as you, you glance through the, the different words that you've spoken, that the you've had the motive, the very motivations of your heart, you quickly recognize sainthood and me don't go together. 
because I'm far from being pure. In fact, Isaiah even describes us, right? He says all of, even our righteous acts, the things in our own mind that we think are, are good and holy and righteous before God are nothing but, nothing but filthy rags. Right? We talked in the last few weeks about how every last one of our sins stain us before God. And that if a saint is a holy one, one who has been, been purified and cleansed and made pure, man, as I look at my life, that's not who I am. Because I've fallen short. I've, I've sinned. Right? It's... it's why we even confess at the beginning of our service, right? As we come into God's presence, in God's house, I'm sinful. I've had sinful thoughts. I've spoken sinful words. I've done sinful things. I've had sinful motivations in my heart. That sin, because we aren't righteous, because we aren't perfect and holy like God expects us to be, because we have sin, God says, you should be punished. That's the result of, of sin, right? Punishment and, and death. It's being separated from God and his love forever. And that's what's comforting then when we look at these words from Revelation, huh? Because that's how you and I know ourselves, right? Right? You and I daily live with that sinful nature inside of us, a sinful nature that causes us to do things we don't always want to do, that leads us into temptation that all too often we stumble into, a sinful nature that dirties us before God, a sinful nature that seeks to rob us of our title of saint. And the guilt of that, the guilt of those sins, we carry with us. And then in these words, God comes to us and reminds us of how he sees us. He looks at us and he says, you aren't just a saint when you get to heaven. That isn't something that happens to you when you leave this earth and, and join that multitude around the, the throne of God. No, you are a saint now. And why can you say that? Why can God come to you and say, you are a saint now? Listen to the words of the prophet Isaiah. In chapter, 60, uh, chapter 61, he says, I, delighted great, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me in garments of salvation and arrayed me in robes of righteousness. Or listen to what John writes a little bit earlier in the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. Or John in his first letter. The blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. And just a few verses later, words that we spoke as part of our confession of sins, right? Where he says, Gotta find it. He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. God looks at us and what does he see? Saints. He sees saints because he sent his son and, and that son lived perfectly in our place and with his death on the cross has washed all of our sins away. Right? John writes, the blood of his son purifies us from all sin. It's a hard picture to understand, right? Because have you ever gotten blood on a shirt or on pants or something that you wanted to wear? What does blood do to it? Stains it, right? Maybe you do that. I've had it like with my collars on my white shirts. You, you shave Sunday morning if you're not careful. Suddenly you've got all these dull red dots on your, your collar. Right, that aren't going away. Jesus' blood doesn't stain. It, it, it cleanses us. It purifies us from the stain of sin. And then God takes that, that perfect life that Jesus lived 
And he says, that righteousness is now yours. So that you, in God's eyes, are holy, cleansed of your sin, and perfect because of Jesus. In other words, right now, you are a saint. A holy one. Cleansed of sin, made perfect in Christ, pure. A saint here on earth. And what does a saint do? A saint who who knows his own sinfulness and the guilt that goes along with that sin. A a saint who knows where, where he should go because of his sin. But a saint who also knows what God has done for him. Well, he he proclaims God's goodness, huh? Here on earth, he he joins with the crowd of saints in heaven in proclaiming salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Right? Saints gather together to, to, to proclaim God's praises for the salvation God has given us. Saints gather together regularly at worship in order to to thank God for, for making us saints. Saints gather together to be, to be fed by God in his word and through the sacraments. To be reminded again and again what our God has done for us and how he has made us saints in Jesus. Saints fix their eyes on Jesus, huh? Just a few moments ago, we, we sang that song for all the saints. Did you notice how verses 4, 5, and 6, the melody was the same, but the arrangement was a little different? Wasn't quite as, as grand as the first three verses in the last two? Did you notice what the, the hymn writer was doing? In verses 4, 5, and 6, what was he talking about? Saints here on earth, right? Going through the struggles of life. Right? And so it wasn't quite as boisterous because he knows saints here on earth, well, he calls us warriors. Right? We're constantly battling against our sinful nature in a sinful world, against the devil. Right? Saints, while still here on earth, but struggling. Though the way the church has has described it is the saints here on earth are the church militant. In other words, they're the saints that are fighting. They are fighting against their own sinful nature. They're fighting against the devil. But also, in those saints' eyes, is their Savior. And the promise that their Savior is coming back, right? And so as you get to verse 6 of the hymn, it's already describing how saints are, are looking forward to the day of their deliverance. Right? When they aren't just saints militant here on earth, but now saints triumphant in heaven. And so for the last two verses, then it describes that, right? About how God is going to to take us one day, either either through death or his return, to be saints triumphant in heaven where we join and singing those praises of our God, not not just here on earth, but forever in heaven. You see, you and I just aren't saints now, but we're saints forever, aren't we? Here, our praises are muted a bit because we're in the midst of that struggle and that battle. And we have those who have gone before us, right, who who join in our praises as they gather around the throne. And one day we will join those saints and all believers, right, the way John describes it in the very beginning, That great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb rejoicing in the one who has freed us. So that on All Saints Sunday we don't just remember those who have gone before us who join us in praising our salvation in heaven. But we see how because we are brothers and sisters in Christ with them As saints here on earth, we are saints now. And one day we'll join them in heaven. So when you think of the word saint, don't just think of 
someone else that you think, boy, they're someone who's a lot stronger spiritually or who's more faithful. But think of yourself. Because that's how God sees you. He's called you to be his child. He's made you perfect and holy, a saint. Now and forever. Amen. Our Savior Lutheran Church is located on the south side of Birmingham off Highway 280. We are on Dunnant Valley Road, about three quarters of a mile east of Treetop Family Adventure and Sports Blast. Our Sunday services begin at 1015 with Sunday School and Bible Class at 9 o'clock. We welcome visitors and hope to see you soon. For more information, please visit our website at OurSaviorBirmingham.com. Click on Sermons at the top of the page for a copy of today's service folder. You can also find us online on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.